Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. I want to talk to you a bit about The Art of Fiction by Ayn Rand. And I believe that these were uh, lectures given in her uh, living room in New York and later put down. I believe so, I'm not sure. I'm going to skip to page 13. When you compose a story, you start with an abstraction, then you find the concretes which add up to that abstraction. So a, a writer chooses what they want to write about. They choose their theme, their abstraction, and they decide where they're going to show that, how. They break it down into concretes. For the reader, the process is reversed. He first perceives the concretes that you present, and then he adds them up to the abstraction with which you started. And then she says, I call this a circle. Uh, and then she gives the example from Atlas Shrugged. We're going to skip to the end of that paragraph. The concretes have summed up in your mind to the abstraction with which I started. If she's done a good job, I just intersect there, which she did. And which I had to break down into concretes. She bro breaks them into concretes, you read it, you put the concretes together, and you see the abstraction that she started with. Okay. Um, every chapter and paragraph of Atlas Shrugged is set up on the same principle. What abstraction do I want to convey, and what concretes will convey it? All right, that I think is interesting in its own right, and now we could say we're going to point two of the video. About characterization. Now, I took an introduction to writing class in college, and it was supposed to be an introduction to poetry class, but the first day of class, he said, forget the syllabus and forget the books I had you buy, Robert Creeley and some nasty crap. He said, forget that, we're just going to study Eminem, the rap singer. All you need is his two latest albums. And he gave us a little slip of paper with the name of the two albums. We had to get those two albums. And the rest of the books, which I had already purchased, we didn't need. Well, I stood up and walked out. I went and got into this writing class, which I hadn't planned to take, but it was just down the hall. It was available. They had some room. And one of the pieces of advice they gave in that writing class, in the book, in the little book we had to read, and we would read a few pages and all talk about it in class, one of the pieces of advice they gave was, if you're starting a story, start with a list of, of details about your main character. You might start with a list, and they had a list similar to what I'm about to give you. Um, they like to eat Cheerios in the morning, but they don't eat any milk with it, they just have them dry. They like bowl fights, and they like to wear green tennis shoes. So you've got a few things about this person now, and now you can go on and start the story. And I objected in class. I said, that is asinine. That is not how you characterize somebody. That's not a character. That's not coming up with anything. That is nonsense, and it's a waste of time. It made me angry, and they didn't like me. The whole class hated me. So I want to give you an idea from from Ayn Rand's perspective and what I think is obvious uh, it's, and it's probably been said before quote young writers often make the following mistake if they want a strong independent rational hero they state in narrative that he is strong independent and rational no what's wrong with saying that let's go on or they have other characters pay him these compliments in discussion this does not convey anything. It might even convey that the other characters who say that are under misapprehensions. Strong, independent, and rational are abstractions. They don't exist. They do not exist. They are abstractions. The only thing that exists are concretes. We know that much. Strong, independent, and rational are abstractions. In order to leave your reader with those abstractions, you have to provide concretes that will make him con conclude, aha, this man is strong because he did X, independent because he did defied Y, rational because he thought Z. So you have to put, pause from the text there, you have to put actual actions in the, on the character. That's what characterizes a character, is actions, what he does, the concretes, what he thinks, what he does, what he wants. Now she makes the point elsewhere in the book, not worth finding the quote, which I can't find. She makes a point elsewhere in the book that the character's motives are the only thing that characterizes him. You wonder, how do you characterize him? How do you turn him into a character that's different from other characters? 
How do you turn him into the character you want? Well, you can't just say things like, he's strong, he's independent, he's brave. You have to show it in action. So, characterization happens only through showing or describing the motive. The motive, what motivates this person. Now, that is something to take with you, not just when you're reading fiction, or when you're writing fiction, that is something to take with you in your everyday life. That the person's character, speaking outside of fictional literature now, a person's character is, the, the, the essence of their character, we should say, is whatever motivates them. Because a good writer will follow this rule. I mean, it's not a rule, it's just a, a law. It's a, it's a law of, of writing, it's a law of communication that you characterize by showing motive. And you'll be able to follow very closely along those lines, always asking what is his motive. And a good writer will use that powerfully, and bad writers don't. That's another thing about Hemingway. I've mentioned it before. Excellent writer, if you want to turn your brain off, it's like watching TV or something. Turn your brain off and not worry and go to sleep. Read some Hemingway. You don't have to think. You never have to read a paragraph twice. You never have to wonder what the character's motives were. They usually tell you. They usually tell you, then I wanted to go back to camp and have some scotch. So we got the lion, put it on the truck, and headed back to camp. And uh, You never have to wonder about their motives. But a good writer in a good book will mo show motive as the essence of characterization. There's actually no other way to do it. Well, I thought that those were some interesting thoughts. So what this comes down to is that you always have to dramatize the character. You always have to put show action. Show, that's what motive is, is the drama. You have to actually show him thinking and acting the world. You can't just put a paragraph that says what he did. Then he blah, 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 and he blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. You've got to show the scene. You've got to take the writer to the scene, or the, pardon me, the reader to the scene. So then I do want to skip down to page 147. 146, pardon me, always dramatize important events. Now, the earlier point we've just come off of is always dramatize character. Right? You always have to put motive for the character. That's how you show what character is. Now, how do you show the motive, as it were, in the story? How do you show what the purpose of the story is? Not by synopses of events. You can't just do a synopsis. You have to dramatize important events. You can't dramatize the whole novel. That would be boring. You do have to make synopses of some things. But uh, you can't synopsize everything. You have to make some of it dramatic. Dramatization serves as the emphasis of your story. The key events should be dramatized. The less important material, such as transitions, can be narrated. Now she goes on to say just a little bit more um, that it's not advisable to make estimates of your character. Uh, it's not advisable to describe your character. Uh, show, show your character. Don't describe them. Um, even if you do describe, she says, whenever you make an estimate in a narrative, be sure the action and the dialogue support your estimate. Otherwise, don't make the estimate. And in general, it's inadvisable to make estimates anyways. It's page 147. Um, and you'll find <coughs> in bad fiction writing um, that people just use words to describe the character. And they never show him in action. And indeed, if you would take out those descriptive words, oftentimes you wouldn't even have a hint or a clue uh, that uh, it from their actual actions, what the author was trying to tell you about this person to begin with. That's in bad writing, and I don't suggest you read too much of it. Usually amateurish, certainly not classical literature. Um, and be careful if you're trying to write short stories or dabbling a bit that you don't fall into these traps. I guess that's the um, end of what I want to say. I wouldn't want to excerpt too much more. If you like what I've been saying, you might grab the book art of fiction. She also has the art of nonfiction, which might be worth doing a video or two on. Um, so just remember that. Always look for motive to understand the essence of somebody. Always put motive in to tell people what the essence of someone is. And your motivation that people glimpse of you in day-to-day -day life tells them something about you. What motivates you? And that tells them quite a lot. Motivation Characterization cannot be done by description, has to be done by showing the concretes. Just remember that while you're writing your novel.